Holy, this was amazing. It was painful, but damn was it amazing. I think the concept of transferring the memories back over, I've seen over the past few episodes, especially after last week, I saw an increase in discussion of Kisara giving memories back, or at least considering the possibility, but to me that was like, okay, yeah, but episode 13, not episode 11, not episode 12, last episode, that makes sense to me. But what do you... A good and bad mixture tied up into one, because you have to consider a couple of things. One, Kasara gave everything back, but equivalent exchange. She lost all her memory. She is essentially a clean slate, so the person they've come to know and love or know and hate is no longer there. Shu now has all of his memories back, which is good, but now there's conflicting feelings, because with those memories, he gets to see the good and the bad, but most importantly, his feelings for characters like Aino, and everyone that he's built relationships with. So, he was naturally developing strong feelings for Kisara, one in part because everyone else was being ripped away from him, but two, just the natural chemistry and stuff that was happening. So you have all these conflicting emotions of how he feels about different people when he didn't have memories of other people, so now he's he remembers everything, but he now almost has like different personalities that have feelings for other people. The original him loved Aino, but we see why he ultimately did what he did in order to get revenge and everything like that. But to see the way they did the almost like flashback with the kiss there, where I knew something was up because there's no way after what we've seen over the past couple of episodes that she would take every last memory, so I knew it had to be something along with giving something back. I just was expecting when she came to, or he came to, I should say, that she would be dead or something, and you know, that was the cost of giving the memories back because he was so close to having nothing himself, so... I knew there had to be some form of, a, like, equivalent exchange. I just, for some reason, glossed over her almost becoming nothing and just removing everything she's held dear. At this point, it's kind of good because, I mean, yes, they use the giant laser in the sky to blast Sister into the bottom of the ocean, which, at first, I was a little disappointed that a couple of shots and seemingly the battle was done, but knowing that there was more episodes to come, I knew it wasn't going to be the end of the battle. But I did question, like, how the hell were they going to deal with it when this weapon's not going to be enough if it doesn't take care of her the first time, she'll probably come back even stronger. Two, you have no memories to give the girl who powers up to get powerful, and even if you gave her a billion memories, how the hell are you supposed to deal with this apocalypse level threat? And of course, you also have to worry about the fact that she's basically on death's doorstep and doesn't even remember his family, he can't even remember the people next to him during the fight there. Everything was looking rather grim, so this was the only way it feels like they could go, and now I'm curious to see, is the contract completely done? Is it over? Like, can Kissing no longer give memories back to her? Or is there going to be a new contract that gets made? I don't know. Honestly, talking with people in the comments, the thing that I think more people were picking up on was that he's basically, he's juiced out. There's nothing left to really take. So maybe other people will make contracts with Kisara and that's how they'll get away with basically him not killing himself, but still powering up our girl. But what a way, like this show's had some twists and turns. And I mean, ever since like around the episode four mark, Shu's character has become way more fleshed out. But what's great about an episode like this is it doesn't necessarily show us things we haven't seen before or didn't expect to see. But seeing it together in the way that they present it, it really does flesh out his character to really show you that he was never this selfish, self-absorbed character who mooched money because he didn't care about others' feelings. Like, everything just makes so much sense for the betrayal of his family in terms of what Mother Dearest did, in terms of demonically possessed, and everything like that. It's just understandable the train of thought he went with, and how the more you remove from him, the less of a good person, or the less of shoe is left there. So the more you remove, the more shitty he appears to be in front of these people, and it just explains so many prior actions to craft this narrative and craft a character that really isn't like many anime characters over the past few years. Like, he's truly an amazing main character. And for a girl like Kisara, who started out as a very selfish demon, I mean, you can look at the fine print that he tried to hide in terms of, like, contract cancellation because he wasn't stupid making a contract with a demon. You definitely want to have your safe card, so if shit hits the fan, he can get out of it. It was something to do with, like, praying in a certain way. But I love the fact that she removes that and then just adds more and more and more. And she really looked like a demon when that happened. I mean, not only was she looking at, like, oh, this is what you do with the contracts you made with other humans. Well, it's not really a contract, it's a kiss, but of course, leave it to a demon to not really get that. 
the interlinking of hands and just to see how for so long Kisara was a parasite right like she was sucking memories out and she felt like someone who was obsessed and very much wanted to remove everyone that wasn't her from his memories because that was the agreement they made but we also see in this episode that there was definitely a lot more safety nets put in place prior to those being removed but over the course of gaining all those precious memories from Shu and him becoming more emotionalist, she ended up becoming more emotional and realizing what she was doing to the point that we ended up having this selfless moment where she understood what needed to be done because she felt so guilty after ripping away so many beautiful connections and knowing that she was so close to removing everything, if not maybe even his life. And that's the character transition I really like because Kassara actually felt like a demon. She felt like someone who had these more evilish motives or more demonic atmosphere around her rather than just being the cute girl with demon wings. She felt like a demon through and through, but the way she turned more human because of absorbing a human's memories as this man basically became a vegetable, it's brilliant character writing, brilliant directing, and really once again elevates Engage Kiss up another notch after already doing so a few different times over the course of these now 11 episodes. I really think after episode 13, as we do have two episodes left to go, that this show will go out on a bang. It really feels like they're taking their time building up to that end goal. Initially, when the blast did hit her, I thought, damn, like I knew that was going to be a part of it, but I was expecting a cooler battle than just knocking her into the sea. But knowing that this was just really phase one of however many phases they're going to have to deal with, and shit is about to hit the fam, gaining all the memories, our girl seemingly the contract's done, are they going to make a new one? Is there going to be another thing they can do? I don't know. But shit just got way more emotional, way more engaging, and way more exciting after thinking it couldn't get any more exciting after you launch seemingly an Attack on Titan level threat on the city before changing courses, doing something else, and making the show 10 times better than it already felt to me. Like, I can't gush enough about Engage Kiss. I enjoyed it ever since the beginning, but I saw some pushback in the early stages. But ever since the shoe memory reveal back around episode four, it just feels like this show, it had something to prove. Like it said, hey, if you stuck around, whether you just, you wanted to see what happened or you said, hey, this is at the very least fun like I thought at the beginning, we're truly going to turn this into something that you aren't going to be forgetting about after a season's worth of time. Like this show is the type of show similar to A1's other show Recoil this season where I feel like I'm going to be thinking about this one for quite a few seasons to come. And that's what you want to see with these shows, these originals. Yes, there's a game being made alongside this, which I think the mobile game being released pretty soon. But all things considered, like, this is an original idea. It feels original. It feels planned. And the fact that, once again, another A1 show is continuing to blow me away, both production and story-wise. A1 is on a roll, and I can't wait to see where they're going to take the future of their projects from here. But thoughts, feelings, theories down below. What do you think of that shocking ending? Let me know. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Till next time, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.